In a database system, unique timestamps are assigned to each transaction using Lamport's logical clock. Let transaction T1 and timestamp of T1 and timestamp of T2 be the timestamps of transactions T1 and T2 respectively. Besides, T1 holds a lock on the resource R and T2 has requested a conflicting lock on the same resource R. The following algorithm is used to prevent deadlocks in the database system, assuming that a transaction assuming that a kill transaction is restarted with the same timestamp. So this is the algorithm. If timestamp of T2 is less than timestamp of T1, then T1 is killed, else T2 waits. Now assume any transaction that is not killed terminates eventually. Which of the following is true about the database system that uses the above algorithm to prevent the deadlocks? Options are the database system is both deadlock free and starvation free. Option B, the system is deadlock free but not starvation free. Option C, the system is starvation free but not deadlock free. Option D, neither deadlock free nor starvation free. So this is a question coming from DBMS section regarding timestamp ordering and deadlocks. So in this question they have given that unique timestamps are assigned to each transaction using Lamport's logical clock. Which means that each transaction happening will be having a unique timestamp and since they have said Lamport's logical clock which means the timestamps will be assigned in the increasing order only. If a transaction B comes after transaction A then A will have a smaller timestamp and B will have a larger timestamp. Now they have given that T1 holds a lock on the resource R and T2 has requested a conflicting lock on the same resource R. Now consider these two transactions T1 and T2. Currently T1 has the lock and T2 is requesting a conflicting, conflicting lock on the same resource R which T1 has. Now they will check this. If timestamp of T2, T2 is requesting the lock is less than timestamp of T1. T1 is the transaction which has the lock. So if timestamp of T2 is less than timestamp of T1, then the process T1 would be killed. Otherwise the process T2 will have to wait till T1 finishes execution. And also they have given that any transaction that is not killed will terminate eventually. So if you take a look at this, it is somewhat like the transaction which has a smaller timestamp has the higher priority here. If the timestamp that has a smaller, if the transaction that has a smaller timestamp is requesting a lock which is held by a transaction that has a higher timestamp, suppose T1, in that case the process which has the lock and the higher timestamp that one would be killed. Otherwise, the transaction would be waiting, meaning it's kind of like the transaction which has the smaller timestamp will be having a higher priority. And if that request a lock held by a lower priority transaction, the lower priority one would be killed. Otherwise, if a transaction is requesting a lock held by a, another transaction which has a lower timestamp or a higher priority, then that transaction will have to wait. The other one won't be killed. So let us look here. This is the condition for deadlock. In the question they have asked us about deadlock and starvation. Okay. So when does deadlock happen? Suppose two transactions, consider two transactions A and B. A has this resource, B has this resource, and B wants this resource and A wants this resource. This is kind of a circular wait. A and B is waiting for a resource held by each other. Now this is the case for deadlock, right? But in this question, Suppose the transactions, let these be the transactions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. which came in this order, meaning they will have the timestamps in some increasing order, unique timestamps in some increasing order. Suppose 2, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, etc. these be the timestamps. Now if you look, this A and B here, they will have different timestamps, right? A and B always has different timestamps, meaning one of the process will be having kind of that higher priority which we discussed earlier meaning whichever timestamp whichever of a or b has the lower timestamp let us say a's timestamp was 5 and b's timestamp was 2 imagine so a is requesting a resource which is held by b and a has a higher timestamp in that case a will have to wait nothing will happen which is given in this algorithm here but at the same time, B is requesting a resource held by A, correct. 
but b has a timestamp smaller than a in that case what happened a will get killed just like in that algorithm given here when a is killed all the logs obtained by a would be released and b will get that log and b can continue running which means deadlock can never happen in the question it's clearly given everyone has unique timestamp meaning there would be at least one process which has the smallest timestamp or the highest priority here similarly whenever two process or two or more process are considered one will always have the smallest timestamp so that process can kill all the other process and obtain the logs from them so a deadlock will never occur in this scenario so this is deadlock free now let's look at starvation okay let us say this transaction 3 has a lock imagine and let us say 2 is requesting the same lock in that case 3 will be killed and then 2 will continue running now 2 has the lock okay now imagine 1 is also requesting the same from 2 1 has a smaller time stamp so 2 will also be killed and one will obtain the logs which was held by two and one will continue to run and there is no one else who can kill run kill one because one has the lowest timestamp here so one will keep on running so the processes which are killed right they will be restarted two and three but when they are getting restarted they will start with the same timestamp which they had previously five and six they won't be starting with some timestamp at a later later stage like they won't be starting with the timestamp greater than 10 or something they will start with the same timestamps only this was given here in the question a kill transaction is restarted with the same timestamp now two or three will be restarted they will have to reacquire the logs which they previously had but the condition for starvation is one process having to wait for a log indefinitely without knowing when it will get that is the case for starvation but if you see here 2 and 3 are restarted now 1 will eventually finish its execution so in this list again 2 is the one with the smallest timestamp here after 1 finishes running so there is no one else who can exclude who can kill 2 there is no other transaction which can kill 2 now 2 is kind of like having the highest priority in this list now and whenever 2 wants a lock 2 will get that lock because 2 can kill any other process here similarly after 2 is done 3 will be able to kill any process coming back here coming at a later stage meaning that they won't be denied lock indefinitely there will be a time after which they will definitely get their lock that is whenever all the process before it has finished running so a newer process coming won't be having a timestamp before 2 or 3 meaning when whenever a process is assigned a timestamp whenever all the process running before it is finished that process will definitely able to acquire all the logs it needs so this will also never cause starvation meaning there will never be starvation so that this logic is deadlock free as well as starvation free sorry so the option is system is both deadlock free and starvation free option a is the right answer